Simple leveling is a certified masterpiece after episode two from AH Brandon. Show me what you got. Seriously, the hype was worth it. Soul leveling episode two just cemented itself as a certified banger, a certified masterpiece. I'll die on that hill. I really think episodes one and two should have aired together. There's yes, if it was a one hour premiere, then there would have been nobody trying to fucking shit on this show because episode one by itself, a little shaky if you're trying to hook the audience. But with episode two content, I think you, you can be pretty sure that this did hook everybody. Reason why a lot of like mangas, whether it's a weekly manga, they're usually like 20 pages long, give or take. A lot of the first chapters are like 60 to 80 pages just to get you into the thick of it. Make sure you really understand where it's going. And as someone who loves like hero fantasies and overpowered characters, mm. I knew it would continue to improve. But I saw a lot of people after episode one say like, oh, he's just going to power up. And really, I know where this is going to go. Very well. He is going to power up. And that's the thing. Any show can do this power fantasy. It's all about the execution. How do you do it? That differentiates you. Overpowered character. And instead, what we actually got with episode two was this insane test where rather than just powering the MC up, you have human survival kick in. There's this test. There's this prayer. There's this ritual in order to deal with an impossible situation that's designed to kill you and break the human spirit that one by one people fall because they sprint out of there and give up on faith and by the end of it one has to die and yes then with the whole situation do you accept do you want to be a player the player now part we're gonna get yeah. into something a little more crazy but the fact that rather than this just being let's make our character read a scroll and power up and save everyone instead he actually had to give his let's have a character read a scroll and power up which anime is that i feel like that's happened before was it well, I got a chief, chief skill from another world kind of had that, right? I mean, there were scrolls. Nah, I mean, there are so many animes, different isekais and power fantasies where the characters do get these powers undeservingly. Like, there's no trial. There's no, like, effort to get it. They just get it and they start flexing, which kind of defeats the purpose. I think that the fun in these kind of shows comes from the journey of the power-up, right? It's like all about building the hype and anticipation because once you become powerful at a certain point, these shows become boring because it's the same shit over again, right? Everybody already knows that the guy is powerful. There's no more underdog story anymore. You can't really build up this like dark horse story. And that, at that point, that's when the power scaling gets a little bit kind of wonky. Then you have to introduce so many new powerful characters to make the main character a little bit more comparable. But again, I, I think the early game of these power fantasies, that's where the true gem is. Life in order to protect everyone else. And in doing so, we witness one of the coolest intros to a character seemingly about to be overpowered that I think I can recall in quite some time. Soul leveling, certified banger, no questions asked in my opinion. I do think it was a missed opportunity not airing episodes one and two back to back. I mean, there's a reason shows like Free Ren dropped its first four episodes <laughs> so you could watch them all in one go. Dude, the first... Yeah, I mean, if, if Free Ren did it, well, episodes one to four weekly... Oh, well, like, I'm sure people would have still enjoyed it and loved it, but it's a little slow, right? At least you try to do that so you get to get Stark stuff immediately with the dragon stuff to bait a lot of people in. But yeah, I get it. I get it. I really think it just would have flowed better. But that's literally the only thing that I think is wrong about how they started this one up because this is beautifully produced. The opening, the ending, the music, the voice actors, it is so well done. And you know I'm here for more. Full live reaction episode two. Though. Go to his Patreon, guys. Patreon. Go, go, go. See my full and cut hype. It's over there if you're interested. Now, this was probably my favorite episode that I've seen so far of this anime season. Everything about it, top to bottom, perfection. Every anime we've seen so far this weekly is, yeah. I mean, I haven't really watched that many new animes this season, right? We've watched like the Healing Magic one, Instant Death. We have Mash, right? We have we have a uh, Chain Soldier, but other than and Classroom of the Elite as well. But Solo Leveling, Episode Two, it's pretty kind of hard to top that. I I think in terms of just like pure hype, pure pure like just entertainment. I think Soul Leveling Episode 2, yeah. No, I totally agree, yeah. Love it. It's so cool because over the course of the episode, I kind of have an idea. I'm like, okay, the idea of the commandments and following them. Okay, we need to worship. I was like, yes. okay, let's Just start praise praying. them up. They yeah. bow. Things start getting a little better. Okay, but now we have to show, like, worship, right? So we have to pray. I'm thinking, 
Okay. Praise Jesus. Whatever they need. No, 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 no. You don't praise Jesus because it specifically says, you know, praise the Lord. The Lord in this context here is not Jesus Christ. No, no, no. It's the statue, say, right? I'm now your number one worshiper. And this one dude had the right idea before he got stomped on. Close. And I thought the Very direction close. they were going to go was that we just need to pray to evil. I was like, okay, do you want me to pray to Satan? Like, do you want me to pray to Hades? Whatever you want, I'm going to do because I don't want to get brutally killed. And the idea of how it slowly over the course, it's like this ritual, right? The thing gets up after the respect, and then you're going to different statues to start playing this song. And over the course of it, we see our MC, who is considered the weakest member in this party, but in terms of survival instinct, being able to read a room, second to none in that room. He figures that shit out. Second to none in terms of a lot. So I guess because he's just lost over and over and over again, he's failed so many times. His battle instinct IQ is so high because he has so much experience just losing over and over. I, I think that's the gist of it. People, maybe even a group of thousands. The fact that we see him lose his leg, he loses his arm. At one point, he gets skewered and slammed onto that altar slab. It is brutal. But yeah, the fact that it was. There's this really cool moment where they, after everything's kind of seemingly okay, as each person goes into like that circle, a new. Oh, the altar. Up. The I'm altar. Thinking, okay, it needs like seven people as like a sacrifice. My thought was one person would survive and that would end up being our MC. And like seven people would walk into that. It would light up. They would all be human sacrifices. Power would hmm. go into our character. That was like my. That's a pretty good guess. No, for sure. I could totally have seen that happen. Yeah. Train of thought. Instead, no, once all seven were there, the gate opens. And this is so cool. This is like, this is what tied the bow on this being such an impressive intro hook because I think like the gate opening, right? The door opening as soon as that fire was set there. There was something that played into the human psyche that was so raw. It was just the most relatable things each character were doing out of their own self-interest because we're greedy human beings, right? We're just all trying to survive. It's totally normal. It's totally fine. But to see it from these characters while they cry and scream, it's just so raw. Something about that felt so... Like, uh, what's the word? I could, like, refer I, could, I, I, I feel like I could have been in that situation, you know? Because rather than this just being, here's this big titan-like creature we need to defeat, instead, it was based on human survival instincts. Mm. People, our bodies are designed to survive. If we try to hurt ourselves, our body will kick into overdrive and try to keep us alive. So when you're put into a situation where even if you have the kindest of hearts, if you have a family, you don't want your family to go without their father or their mother or whoever it is, right? So the fact that the first one who runs through, the door slowly shut. So basically, it seemed like one person had to stay behind. And yep. you knew it had to be our MC, but I like the fact that the reason the MC stayed behind wasn't because... You know, it was just immediately out of the way. Like, there was this guy who said... This moment, man. Mr. Song's face here. I think the anime... I'm not sure if it was just me. Maybe I was reading too deep into it. But I swear to God, there was a frame where Mr. Song's face changed as soon as he heard Juhi's legs just, like, buckle to the ground. And I swear to God, I memed about it in my reaction saying, you know what this guy's thinking? This guy's thinking this is the opportunity of a fucking lifetime. But I think for that quick frame of second where his facial expression changed, he actually did realize, he's like, I can fucking live right now. Holy shit. This girl, she can't walk. And Sung Jae-moo can't walk. Oh my god, I'm living right now. I, I think that's what's actually going on in his head. Like, listen, take her and go, right? Like, you guys have a full life ahead of you. I've had a decent enough life. I made some mistakes today. You guys go. But he has one leg and she can't walk. Mm -hmm. So who has to stay behind? Of course, it has to be our MC. And this is interesting because I thought what was going to happen here. Like, the entire time, I had the general idea, but every time I thought I knew the outcome, it would go in completely different directions. I thought... It was a timer. As long as he stayed alive long enough, those statues would deactivate and basically yeah. he would get a reward of some sort. Like, hey, you, it kinda you did. worship me, you followed the rules. I mean, it, it kind of did, right? The blue flame going out, that was a timer. You just had to survive, Dennis. If you survive it, then you get that acceptance of becoming a player, right? Well, here's your reward. Go be the solo leveler and be absolutely OP. No, man, that dude got skewered and they were teasing him because they could have easily cut his head off right away. They could have stabbed him in the heart, but they would just keep skewering and skewering to the point that he gets thrown down. And with, I think they said like 0 0.2 seconds left, choose yes or no. Do you <laughs> want to be a player? Here we are.
That is such of course we're gonna say cool yes. Hook. The world's interesting with the little portals opening up. I mean, we have the mother plotline with him and his sister. There's a lot of good little breadcrumbs here, but the idea of where he now goes as a character, I leave episode two with no idea where the world goes from here. I know nothing about soul leveling other than it's hype as hell. Well, he's got a level now. crazy fight scenes, but this was so cool. No one told me that I could be in for a ride where sometimes we're in situations where we have this survive this horror survival from a video game level and we need to be able to manage it because otherwise if this thing goes to the service who knows what type of a pop and think about it this is just episode two like this is the beginning well in the beginning sometimes you're put into these crazy end game situations immediately so maybe the statue already is like super super strong compared to some of the other things that we'll see in the future but still like it kind of gets your hype up for what's to come in the future if this is just the beginning apocalypse could unleash absolutely brilliant the production man the running animation the attack animation just at every the opening animation alone has no right to look as good as it does but and i fucking did not even watch it because the visuals pretty much spoiled but also just the soundtrack alone to hiroki sawano again the instruments lighting up during the praise the lord section right the way that the instrument playing synchronized with the soundtrack but the fact that that level of animation can be seen in the episode when they're running and trying to flee for their life the music how is surely they're not baiting us surely they didn't go all out in the beginning the animation quality is going to drop in the future, right? Because some animes, like ZOM 100, I think, it's a classic one. Episode 1 is a fucking hook. They put everything into Episode 1. And then you realize that the production budget was heavily skewed towards Episode 1, that people could get a good impression on it. Then you realize, ah, shit, everything else is kind of mid afterwards. How does this show produce this well? I really don't know. But I'm so happy they went from saying, hey, this is going to be like a 24 episode back to back to saying, hey, listen, you're getting 12 episodes now. We'll tell you when, when you get the next 12 episodes because... Honestly, if the reason for the production value being good is because we're not getting back to back, I'm totally okay with it. Take take as much as time as you want. Don't rush this. This level of production needs as much time in the oven to cook and the delays and the idea of how they're handling this production. I think they're doing a hell of a good job and I really don't see it slowing down anytime soon because we did have a delay, right? So they did let it cook in the oven and holy shit, that's more than you can say for a lot of anime productions these days. But this is definitely one of the most visually impressive shows I've seen over the past 12 or 24 months. Honestly, like it looks that good. Now, there are a lot of hype series that get anime and hype series aren't going to be for everyone whether it's because you're not really into action or maybe you're not into the style of anime it is right but i think what made this so brilliant is we know we're gonna see crazy action the opening mm -hmm. showed as much right like yeah. if you needed any extra like are you sure it's gonna be hype they teased more than enough but it's the fact that rather than just jumping in and just giving him a power up and just letting him save the way they broke you need to like work towards it you can't just give a character these op powers because what I'm realizing how this anime is differentiating itself from other power fantasies or other isekais that we've seen. I know that this is an isekai, but I'm just talking about the common nature of isekai animes where the main character gets like OP powers. Sometimes they do work hard for it. Sometimes they're just given the powers immediately. But if you work really hard towards something and you persevere in this first two episodes, this felt like an initiation ritual. And it was, right? And the fact that we got there, we suffered through everything, and then we barely survived and got it, it makes it all the more worthwhile. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels like he actually worked for it. Down human mindsets and their fears and how they turn on each other, but then yeah. most importantly, how they sacrifice themselves by the end. It's brilliant. This was such a perfect 10 out of 10 episode. Mm -hmm. And while I very much enjoyed episode one, episode two is where the fun begins. All I leave saying is, holy shit, give me more certified banger. Let me know your thoughts on this episode down below, whether for your source reader. The source reader thing's a little interesting because I heard it's more adapting the novel rather than... Right, so there's a difference between the light novel or the web novel, right? Because there's a web novel, which is like the source, the actual true holy grail, the source material. There's a webtoon, which is the godlike art based off of that, I guess. And there's the anime which is based off of not the webtoon, but actually the original source, right? So that'll be interesting. And the, uh, the comic counterpart. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, source readers differ on this. But either way, let me know your feelings down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe. Guys, y'all know what to do. Go help out Brandon, sub to his channel, like his videos. And I totally agree. I think that episode two should have been, you know, one hour premiere along with episode one in the beginning. But even without that, I don't think I really suffered because of the ridiculous amount of effort and time investment they've put into marketing and advertising this to the point where everyone 
people that don't even know the show are hyping it up because they know the name's still leveling now. And I think episode two actually delivered on it. Next couple episodes will probably be a little bit slower, right? I, I, I don't expect the same level of hype to be happening in the future episodes because like I think episode two, that was just fucking peak. So obviously we're gonna go down a little bit more and what, we're, we're still gonna like level and stuff. And I hear there's a lot more hype to shit to come up. So again, if you're not even watching solo leveling, what are you doing? Go check it out. I definitely recommend this anime.